eternal. You love justice and to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all victims of bloodshed and greed and following your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God. And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord reading today is from the 23rd chapter of Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said to prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. How long will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who pro prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart. They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. 
Let the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord? It is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. Word of God, word of life. We will read Psalm 82 responsively, starting with the antiphon. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. God stands to charge the divine council assembled, giving judgment in the midst of the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan, defend the humble and the needy. Rescue the weak and the poor, deliver them from the power of the wicked. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. They do not know, neither do they understand. They wander about in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are the gods, and all the other children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. Arise, O God, and rule the earth. The second reading is from the 11th chapter of Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson, Jephthah of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight, foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword and they went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commanded for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely. Let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Word of God, word of love. <laughs> Please stand for the gospel affirmation.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I come, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided, father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of, the, of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, maker of the universe, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be for your glory. Jesus Christ, our rock and redeemer. Amen. I always try to tell you the title of my sermon. It's Are We Hypocrites? We have such good news. Our doors are open. No one's coming in. Why? What are we doing? What message are people hearing? The lesson and the psalm and the gospel that were read today, although written so long ago, are still relevant to the world that we live in today. They're relevant and very important if they're read and interpreted with discernment. This is true of any lesson, any psalm, and any gospel that is read, cited, used to teach, and used to influence people. Several of the readings that were read today refer to the crowd of witnesses. Those are the people that have gone to heaven before us, the saints that we pray for and that we loved. In these readings, they are the ones who remain true to their faith, perhaps even dying for it. Their experiences show, they show us why our baptisms can carry such a heavy load. They remind us that following Jesus is not easy in their world or in ours. It's so much easier to walk on the other side of the street, to sleep in on a Sunday morning, and as we know, to join the vitriol of condemning people we don't know or understand. And then it, remind, it reminds us that as 
baptize members of the church, it reminds us that we need to carry our baptism differently. That we need to carry our load differently. In the gospel today, Jesus is setting the stage for the eventual outcome of his ministry and what it means to follow him. A fire of cleansing judgment that spreads the good news. And that baptism you gotta forgive me sometimes. He's going to face a second baptism. That baptism is on the cross. And that baptism is so death is conquered. Our death that we'll never see. He died for our sins to conquer death on the cross. And he finally warns us as human beings, we often are hypocrites to his word that we only see what we want to see and hear what we want to hear. We think that religion brings peace, but religion has really never united people of the earth not the people in the time of Jesus and not the people through the ages. This is what Jesus was prophesying. He knew the hearts of people of this earth who lived among us and their need for power and riches. And he knew their need to control the world around them. That's why the word of Jesus and what we read today is so important. I came to bring fire to the earth. Do you think I came to bring peace? No, rather to divide. We often think of the fire in the Bible as a judgment. This fire of judgment may bring, may be about our inability to save ourselves. When we're exposed to fire, and I'm talking about the fire of real fire or a disaster. When we feel we've lost everything, that's oftentimes when we turn to God, but it's oftentimes when people turn away from God. Now, I must admit, if this was my first gospel lesson in the church, I might turn away and walk right out. <laughs> I've come to divide. Yeah, <laughs> I might turn around and just walk right out. Where's the love in this gospel lesson? I repeat, Jesus came to earth and he came to understand mankind. And boy, he really did, didn't he? He knew that we couldn't make it on our own. And of course, we still can't. We're baptized in the name of God and Jesus died on the cross for our sins, thank goodness. God really did have an understanding when he sent Jesus to us. And in the gospel today, he discussed his second baptism, that baptism on the cross. I never thought of it as a baptism, but he did. A second baptism. One that he was worried about. I don't really blame him. It must have been horrific. We should think about that. It comes full circle. He didn't say it would be easy. And his baptism came at a price. He would be crucified so that we might have eternal life. We, on the other hand, have a different baptism. 
a ritual, ritual we celebrate here in our church sanctuary. And then we go downstairs and we have cake and presents. And people stand here. I have a couple glasses on so I can see your faces because I can't see your faces, but then I can't read either. So I'll take them off in a second. We stand here and people surround the baptismal font and they make promises. And they promise that they will bring that child to church and they'll teach them the Lord's Prayer and the Apostles' Creed. And then how often do we see them again? And we don't know if they fulfill those promises. When I brought my children to church, I wanted them to come for the hope because I taught school and I knew how important it was for kids to have something to believe in, something good to believe in was Jesus Christ. I know that Stefan, even though he's different than what people in many churches find good, he believes in God. Lizzie, I'm not so sure. She fought me every step of the way. And I hope that if she has children, she finds out how important it is for her kids to have hope. And that she brings her daughter or her son to come and be baptized and that she brings that child to church for hope. But we don't often see kids come back to church. So what is that message? Are we hypocrites is the message we have in here and what we're spewing to people vitriol or love i think that's what i'm trying to say but anyway hopefully in some point in time those people did teach the lord's prayer and the apostles creed and the love of god to those children anyway in Hebrews, they taught them the good news. I'll go on now. In Hebrews, the writer reminds us of a faithful crowd of witnesses, of heroes in the faith, faith and Samuel, women and men who died for their faith, that were not saved but they weren't safe from hanging and torture and chains or persecution because they followed the word of God. They were commanded, yet they didn't always receive what God promised. But God's promise is not here on earth. He doesn't promise us that, we do, that life will be good here on earth. Our promise is in heaven. Many people walk into the church. That's the easy part. Living life outside the church as disciples of God, that's the hard part. And that is what is asked of us in our baptism. To worship and follow. Blessed are the poor, the meek, the humble, and the compassionate. Blessed are those who work for, speak for, and make peace in the world. Blessed are you who stand for love and strife and for justice. Blessed are you who understand and love cultures different from you. And blessed are you who can forgive because it is in forgiving that you can be forgiven. As we teach our littlest children when they ask, where is God? What do we say? He's everywhere. And he knows every hair on our heads. 
We can hide nothing from him. He knows our thoughts before we know them. This is what is explained in Jeremiah. This is how he knows those who are trying to lead his faithful away from the church with false teachings and using the word of God for their own benefit. God is watching. And Psalm 82 as God speaks to a cloud of witnesses in heaven with the angels that are sitting around him. He promises, God tells them that he is going to come back and establish justice on this earth. And so as I speak to you, I want to remind you of the love of Jesus foremost. He came to earth to change the earth. But he didn't promise that it would be peaceful. But he did come to find the lost and forgotten for a society, to free the tormented. He didn't come to help government and rich men get richer. He did come for everyone. I want to remind you that books and pictures that have been written, they've been made into Bibles and paintings. They've been put into museums and hung on walls and homes. But people all over the world have different versions of our Lord and Savior. I want to remind you that wars have been fought over who Jesus is and who God is. That man has picked books out of scrolls to form their versions of the Bible so that it serves their purposes oftentimes. A man has picked chapter and verse out of those Bibles so that they control the people around them. But I also want to remind you that the most important thing to remember about Jesus is this. He loved us. Knowing our inhumanity to each other. Knowing that baptism was a burden. And knowing that he took that last walk and he died on a cross so that our sins were forgiven once and for all. And our burden is to show to others the love that he showed to us. Amen. Um, Please join me in singing, Christ is the life. Please stand.
was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before we do our intercessory prayer, I know we would all like to thank Judy for the beautiful sermon she gave us this morning. And we indeed all come together in love before our Lord Jesus at the foot of the cross for the salvation he has given all of us. And that hope and love that is awesome. And so Lord, we come together because we all indeed trust in your extraordinary love. And it is such a joy to know that we come near to you, the Holy One, in prayer, in a dialogue and in listening. How awesome. Arise, O oh God, and sustain your church. We pray for all who dedicate their lives to serving your people. Renew our commitment to our siblings in faith around the globe and bless the work of our economical and interface partners, especially our savior, and Zion Lutheran churches. Merciful God. Arise, O oh God. Let us see your face in our hearts and sustain your wonderful creation, Lord. We pray for all places affected by national disasters especially all those around the globe from the floods in Kentucky and many other places. So many disasters, Lord. Transfer, transform the devastation of floods and fires into fertile ground for all for new life and growth. Fill heaven and earth with your life-giving spirit. Merciful God. Receive our prayer. Arise, O oh God. Beautiful words. And sustain the nations. We pray for all elected officials. Kindle in them a desire to administer, to administer your justice, not our justice, your justice, Lord. Put it in our hearts. Strengthen 
these officials strengthen their resolve to defend those who are vulnerable and to stand publicly against all forms of oppression. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Arise, O oh God, and sustain those who are oppressed. We pray for all people harmed by racist discrimination and all people discriminated against based on their gender identity or sexual orientation. Let us see, Lord, the heart of the people that we encounter and feel and know the love that you want us to show all people. Rescue us, Lord, from all systems that degrade our fellow human beings. Merciful God. Arise, O oh God, and sustain this assembly. We pray for this community in Herkimer and all the communities around the world, celebrating with them because we rejoice and we weep with those who weep. And Lord, we lift to you this morning, Nancy, Anne, Robert, Janet, Barbara, Tim, Joanne, Judy, Peter, Gary, Sharon, Ruth Ann, Gabriel and Daniel, Marilyn, Jack, Shirley, Brenda, Graham, Chase, Harry, and Joe, Joe, and those we name out loud for this time before you. In our joy and in our tears, be near to us, Lord, in our hearts. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Here we can say, if someone would like to say an intercessory prayer at this time. Please be with Chautauqua Institution as they come back together there with the attack on Salman Rushdie. They are an institution that supports everyone. And it was a horrible event this week. May he heal and may our world become a more forgiving place with less violence toward others. Merciful God, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to be together in person if we choose to be. How awesome is that? Because at that time, we can especially build up relationships with you, Jesus Christ and share it so beautifully with others. So we thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place at this time and with all those who listen on Zoom. Merciful God, receive our Thank you. 
Surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, we remember the saints, all the saints that have gone before us. Who have, may we run with perseverance the race, as Paul said, before us until we find our rest in your loving arms, Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The risen Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And also with you. Thank you so much. Let us give each other a sign of that peace. We no longer have to remain six feet apart. You know that, don't you? Isn't that Unless you have people choose to. Yeah, do so. Thank you, Andy. Peace be with you all. I love you all. <laughs> Yeah, Judy. <laughs> we are forever grateful for the gifts of time, money, and talents that are shared through the ministry of Trinity Herkimer. There are many people that give of their time and do wonderful outreach programs in this church that maybe we don't hear about. But we thank the Lord for these people. And because of them and others, all the generosity and support is helping other people in the community and beyond our boundaries here. Our laws. Our love, our yes. Laws. And you have made a difference in so many lives. Thanks for your continued support. Keep it up. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't have to be monetary. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lean on, O King Eternal, the day of your trespass, as forth in fields of conquest, your tents will be our home, through days of revelation, your priests has made us strong, and now, O King Eternal, we lift our battle strong. Lead on, O King Eternal, till sin's fierce war shall cease, and holiness shall whisper the sweet amen of peace. For not with swords loud clashing, you know what's a retreat. But deeds of love and mercy have only been once more. We don't Grace like morning, where are the fates of years? 
announcements, announcements, announcements. <laughs> oh, yes. Can't get away without that. <laughs> okay. Donations. Joanne, right? There's beverages and usable water, reusable water, water bottles. bottles. Reusable. Which, yeah, water reusable. Bottles. And like what the pastor said last week, you, everybody has many of them they're not using. So wash them out clean and bring them in. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And then where there's going to be a book group this uh, next Friday, the 19th, right here in the fellowship hall at 10 a.m. Uh, and Harriet, I believe, leads it up. And you're sharing your favorite yeah. books. <laughs> yeah, share your favorite book. And then tidings for people like me and others <laughs> are due uh, for the tidings August, August 21st. And I want to make sure that everybody is reading the tidings. It takes an awful lot of work to put them together. And it is a joy to do, but there's so much in there that could be very helpful uh, to all of us. So, and then Bible study, we have that every Thursday. It goes on 12 months out of the year, every Thursday at 10 a.m., right downstairs in the fellowship hall. All are welcome. You don't need to even know the Bible. If you have one, bring it. And it's a fun time, but a good learning time, too. Okay, and then if you have any church business, you may call the church number listed on the board or uh, email us. So, Rich? Yes. Thank you for coming to this. Yes, I was just going to say thank you for. Ryan, right? Yeah. Yes, Ryan. Here. We love Tammy. <laughs> we love everybody. You know, we love Tammy. Like Any other announcements? How did, how did, uh, have you had? How did they go? We had 18 people for summer vacation Bible study. Oh, they came too? They came over too? That's kind of cool. 18th came for vacation Bible study. Oh, Chief Joanne fed 45 people every night. Very cool. Yes, they for Joanne. Yeah. She's got muscles. And she's a good cook. There she goes. <laughs> theme for next year. Muscles for Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements, announcements, announcements? Can you believe it? Oh, I, Rose and Ron have a wedding coming up. Do you? She has a wedding coming up. <gasps> Big wedding. Is this in Lake George, too? Is this in Lake George? This one way up north. Are you doing it in Lake George? Yes, Lake George. Oh, wow. <laughs> the wedding spot of the world. Very nice. She's going to be beauteous this time. I know she is. This, she's going to be absolutely gorgeous. She's looking always beautiful every day. I know. She's getting better and better. <laughs> the older she gets. Fine wine. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Any other announcements? Well, I have my daughter visiting us, Jacinda. Jacinda's here. So she, every time she visits us, she comes to church with us. So. My sister from another mother. And she, <laughs> <laughs> anyway. And she has a new grandson. Oh, she's, she's a grandmother now. Grandson. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> another puppy? Oh, <laughs> I know she's Cassie. so cute. Cassie does. She doesn't have enough on her plate already. Okay. <laughs> oh my.
my goodness. Are we ready for the blessing? Okay. Always. The God of peace, Father and Son and Holy Spirit, bless us, comfort us, and show us the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, love your neighbor. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Yes.